morning, good morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Oh, I can take a deep breath now. I am live and I am excited to spend some time with you guys and share some really cool stuff with everybody. Good morning, Miss Jill. Hey, good to see you. Oh, such a time, such a time. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Hope you're feeling a little better. I am very excited today to share some really awesome new things with you and I think our topic's really good too. Um, and I, I said starting this, I'm excited to be here today with you so I can slow down and relax. <laughs> we have been flying at such a pace. Good morning Miss Cammy. Good morning Miss Tammy. I hope you're feeling better also. Uh, we, we've been flying at such a crazy pace and it hasn't been serving me well. It really hasn't been serving the mountain man well either, but for me, my body has been fighting. So sorry for the later time today. I needed to do some treatments and take some care of myself and uh, we both decided this morning that it's time to slow down um, before we kill ourselves. And today's topic kind of goes along and in that place. And, you know, um, for us, we're going through a, a hard spot. Um, but many of us do this even in our normal day-to-day -day, that we just feel like we got to keep chasing that eight ball. we got to keep moving. we got to keep racing. we got to keep doing all this crazy stuff. And really... It doesn't serve us. It doesn't. It, it really it stresses our, our bodies, our minds. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Diane. She says, hi there, looking good. God bless. Slow down if you can. Thank you, and thank you very much for your kind words. And yeah, you know, um, our hard spot kind of put us in a panic. Um, we have been on a roller coaster ride of up and downs. And not knowing which direction to turn in. Good morning, Miss Courtney. Good morning, Chad. And, you know, I think that that sends a message in our world to go into panic mode. And, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today is going through the hard stuff. You know, as we age, we learn patience, we learn maturity, but what we also need to learn is that God puts us where we are sometimes for a reason. Chad, is it okay if I share your story from this morning? That was very inspiring. If it's okay with you, I would love to share it. Good morning, George. And while I hear back from Chad, I want to share something with you guys too. I was blessed, very, very blessed to receive a special package in the mail and this was handcrafted for me as well as were the earrings by Miss Courtney and thank you and she knows I like good humor and I'm going to share this too. Um, that's the card she sent me and when you open it up on the inside it says you go girl. I love it. I love it. If you can't laugh and you can't smile and you can't have fun you may as well be six feet under. The other nice thing, and I don't know if uh, Kim follows me on here or not. Um, I think I mentioned it last week. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. We have the extreme privilege of being on the cover of the new Pioneer magazine. And as a result of that, we've gotten a lot of communications from people via email. Um, but when I was out in town this week to run errands, I got a very, very special card from uh, Kimberly in Pennsylvania. And I just wanted to give a shout out and say thank you in the event that you are um, following me uh, on here. Thank you. But I will also be sending you a handwritten traditional letter because I love to do that. And Courtney, thank you so very much. This is just beautiful. And what's really cool is my winter colors are all like oatmeals and grays. So the pink just looks perfect. And I love it. I love it very, very much. So thank you for your kindness. And I wanted to share something else. Miss Tammy 
sent me something a little while back and I've been wanting to do this and I kept forgetting so forgive me but Tammy works with Lilla Rose and if you aren't familiar with Lilla Rose if you have long hair you will want to know what Lilla Rose is they are hair pieces and um, with long hair it makes it very convenient to quickly toss your hair up and I do not have the link in the description below but Tammy if you would please if it's not too much trouble and if you can't do it now I'll do it later and share it in the comments below and in the description but would you share the link in the comments for your page so that people know how to reach out to you good morning miss Diana and um, these are just fabulous they have all kinds of different um, hair pieces I don't know if I can do this real fast or not but I'll try to but my hair is probably the longest it has ever been and it's like down to my belt and you just toss your hair up these are so easy to use and just so nice and they're not real rough on the hair which makes it really nice because a lot of the other clips tend to pull your hair out um, or break your hair Dun -dun. To do this let me just do that real quick but it's easy they're real easy to use and I wanted to thank you on the air but also give a link so super easy to use and really pretty and you can do a lot of different things with them so I wanted to give that shout out and I am actually gonna pull this out right now because my hair is wet and otherwise it won't dry and then I get cold I'm such a sissy so anyway it's eight degrees here today, so that's why. Oh, Kelly says, yes, Courtney and I love Lilla Rose. We have several between us. Yeah, they're awesome. They are just so awesome, and there's all kinds of different pieces and different types of ways to use them as well. So be sure to check that out and reach out to Tammy. Um, now I want to share with Chad this is exactly what he said to me this morning and it was very very priceless and I think we all need to realize this um, he says God is good he is in control he never changes he is truth he has a plan I sit on the side of the road with gelled fuel he said in my truck not my plan but in capital letters his and you know that's what we need to remember and that was kind of what we had to kind of regroup on um, we had a little bit of reason to get disheveled a little bit um, oh awesome Tammy Tammy shared um, her actual store link so awesome thank you very very much um, you know our house is not selling fast enough for our lender and we are doing everything in our power we have a fella that came twice to see it he was very interested his house was under contract he was going to purchase and when he left here got home the people that were under contract on his home found out that the husband had cancer for the third time and they had to back out of the deal we have somebody else look at it they're very interested we have somebody else coming this weekend to look at it they're very interested but it's not selling fast enough and our concern is always that um, is that you know we may lose the house before it sells and that's a grave concern um, you know it wouldn't it wouldn't benefit us but if that's God's plan and that has been our thing from the beginning is that whatever God's plan is for us we're okay with that but it's it's because we don't get to see the whole picture um, you know our flesh kicks in and and some days are just hard Chad and I had this conversation the other day you know we encourage each other we help each other all of us here you know we inspire and lift each other and pray for each other but there are days where some of that inspiration not that it's not received well not that it's not being received some days are just hard and you want to pack a bag and you want to hit the woods I get that I've been there the mountain man has been there and 
I'm hoping that through today's conversation, we can all kind of hit a new place. Um, Elizabeth, um, this is the hair piece that I was talking about. It is two pieces. It's got the pin and then your place to wrap around your hair. But there's others that clip in. There's others that um, are like this and it's all one piece. And then the back, the pin actually just kind of spins around and goes in. Um, you'll have to look at her store. There's so many different pieces and, they, and they're, they're just wonderful. They're very affordable and they last. They're made really well. And like I said, they're easy on the hair. I have gone to the hairdresser so many times where they say, oh my gosh, what are you using in your hair? Your hair is like broken and, and, and uh, torn in all different places. Looks like you use something in your hair. So you're very welcome, Tammy. Um, okay, Diana's talking to someone else. Okay, so before I dive into our devotional, I just want to talk a little bit about butchering. And I'm going to try to keep this wrapped up. I'm jumping a little bit all over the place. And then the mountain man is going to come up with something unique that we want to share with you as well. He's fin putting the finishing touches on it. But uh, we talked about hunting for your own meat. And um, that is a huge money saver. But another huge money saver is being able to butcher your own meat. And that is where we are right now. We, um, we had the elk hanging for over a week. Uh, our temperatures are great. It was cold. We had like one warmer day, but um, it's really great when you can hang your game for a while, especially in cool temperatures. Um, some of the early seasons are too warm. It just can't be done. If you have a cooler, you can do that. Um, I have a picture actually of our meat in the bathtub, the two uh, front quarters, hind quarters actually. Uh, they were the front quarters actually in the in the tub yesterday so that they could warm up so that we could um, butcher because they were frozen solid but being able to butcher know how to butcher know how to cut your meat and wrap your meat freeze your meat and can your meat that is also another option as well as dehydrating your meat um, we have a chest freezer I just defrosted it this past week so um, So anyway, um, the freezer's ready to go. We've got room in there, so we've got a big elk that's the size of a beef that we have pretty much cut up. Today we'll be wrapping and grinding the burger up, and then we still have two deer tags to fill. Now, if you do not butcher your own meat, but you would like to butcher your own meat, on our YouTube channel, you can go to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube, you will find all of our butchering and canning videos on there. We've canned meat and showed the process. It's very easy. You can can in chunks, you can can in strips, you can can burger. And it's so simple, so easy. You just put the meat in the jar, you wipe the top of the jar off, you put and make sure it's dry, make sure your uh, lids are dry, put them on, screw them tight, and put them in the canner. For us, we're at 3,000 feet, so it's roughly um, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes uh, to can your meat. And you have meat you can pull off the shelf and eat right out of the can, or you can reheat it and cook it, make it into other dishes, uh, your spaghetti, your whatever. Um, so it makes it nice and convenient, especially when you're out hunting till 7 o'clock at night to be able to pull something off the shelf and quickly have a meal. Um, you can also uh, wrap your meats with uh, freezer paper. You can also use the uh, vacuum sealers, which we also have. We were blessed to get a very good meat grinder as well as a... Uh, vacuum sealer as Christmas gifts. Uh, we also have the hand crank um, meat grinder as well, which we use for our first six years here. And grinding all the burger for an elk is quite a workout. And then you add the moose into that and that's when we got a meat grinder. My father-in-law was here while we were grinding and, and the next year we got a grinder for Christmas, which was such a blessing. But having the right tools, um, and, and knowing how to do these things is absolutely priceless and will save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You will have meat 
Now, I, I say this carefully because I didn't consider the fact that we live in an area of tall timber. We are not surrounded by cornfields and varying other fields that the animals are feasting off of where not everything is non-GMO. There are people that have cornfields and soybeans that are GMO uh, seeds and that's what the animals are eating, therefore you will be eating GMO foods because if they're eating it, so are you. We are blessed to be in an area where it's tall timber and lots of grass, so um, they're fed well, they are not GMO animals, and they are really wholesome, good eating animals. The other thing is um, by hanging your meats, you eliminate a lot of the gaminess that many people don't care for. Um, the other thing is it's all how you cook it. Um, long and, and low heat is the ticket to cooking game meats to eliminate your gamey taste. If you cook a piece of deer meat up really fast in a frying pan, it's gonna end up like a hockey puck and it won't be enjoyable. Uh, where if you cook it on low heat and cook it for a longer time period, you will have a very tender piece of meat and very tasty. Um, I imagine, Kelly says they last, we've had ours for five or six years now. I imagine you're talking about the Lilla Rose. And they, they are awesome. They are very awesome. So you, many of you ladies, I know Kelly does a lot of butchering. Tammy does a lot of butchering. They butcher their own animals as well, chickens. Um, we've butchered our chickens. We've butchered rabbits um, and all of our wild game. But uh, chime in here. You know, what are some of the things that you guys um, feel is important uh, for beginners to to know um, like I said on our YouTube channel we take you step by step there is also uh, several field dressing um, videos out there um, on how to get your meat out of the woods and pack your meat out of the woods I'm trying to see George's there we go okay George says I have a funny story about canned meats I use a lot of scraps for dog food and then make stews and soups. One set of boxes of jars said dog food on the label and the other nothing. Someone wanted to help out and just grabbed the jars and made stew. Lol, it was the dog food jars. <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> that is funny. Good morning, Miss Helen. There are there is a lot more context for this morning's plan. Yes, I have I have a long thing here that we're going to delve into real quick here. You need to know how to kill humanely and and then good knives are key. Very good point. Um, and sharp knives. A lot of people work with uh, dull knives and that is actually more dangerous sometimes than a sharp knife, especially when you're field dressing. Um, but and, and when you're field dressing an animal and butchering an animal, you do not need massive knives, um, especially when we're field dressing. We use small knives when we field dress um, an animal out in the field. Um, it, we still have all of our fingers. When you get a big knife in the cavity of an animal and you're trying to cut up into the, um, uh, yeah, I know what I want to say, but it's not coming out today. The windpipe and such, um, you know, big knife, you're taking a chance of taking a finger when you're in there. So it's just, it's knowing what you're doing, learning, key, and having the right tools. Knives are extremely important, good sharp knives and, and good knives that hold a blade. And, and killing humanely is extremely important, both in the field and when you're butchering your own animals. Um, I'm sh I know with Kelly and at Tammy's, as well as our house, that the day of butchering is the only bad day our animals have. They are loved and cared for and enjoyed because they are a lot of fun to watch. No, I knew what you meant, Chad. I knew what you meant. It all goes together. It all goes together. There is more to it all. <laughs> but yes, and I will share, I will share more. Um, but taking good care of your animals, I mean, our animals have been a treasure. They are a lot of fun, but when you homestead and when you live like we do and like Tammy and Kelly and, and others out there, you know, the goal is to raise these animals to help us 
um, be self-sustainable, to provide our family with good food, to know what our animals are eating, to know how they are raised, and and then you know to continuing the process and and taking care of animals humanely is very important. We do have a chicken butchering video on our YouTube channel. Also, it has been rated for children on, uh, for adults only, not for children, um, because of it being a, a butchering video, but I strongly believe that our children should know how to, to do this as well. Our son knows how to do it, um, and, and he knows how to take care of himself in the woods. He knows how to, to kill an animal in the woods to survive for his family, for the meat, for the freezer. And I think that it's an extremely important and feel very deeply that it's an important skill that children should know. Knowing how to do this process so that they can also not only know it, but pass it on. These skills are going to be lost. Our generation of children growing up, many of them don't even know where eggs and milk come from. It's pretty scary. And... Um, that's what we're trying to do is educate on that and to share that information. And I think that by raising our children this way, they have a very wholesome uh, life. And they may not choose to go from the homestead to their own homestead. They may choose to venture out into life and try things, but guaranteed they will end up back on the homestead. And if they don't necessarily end up back on the homestead, those skills are ingrained in them and they will have them for life. So that is extremely, extremely important. So do you guys have other comments or questions in regard to butchering? But I highly suggest that you go to our YouTube channel and search. We have playlists and um, all the information is there. And I really encourage you uh, to learn the process, to sit down with your kids and learn the process. Our channel is family friendly and uh, our content is family friendly. Uh, like I said, YouTube rated that for adults only, but that is why there's a little bit of blood in there. So, um, but it was done humanely. Um, absolutely, our granddaughter helped butcher chickens and she helps milk our goats when she stays on the weekends. Awesome, awesome. That is. I enjoyed those processes so much on our homestead. You know, you hate you hate to see um, some of your chickens go, but at the same time, when you're um, being able to enjoy the bone broth, which is extremely wholesome, and the the chicken, and I mean the broth that comes from a home raised chicken is nothing like you've ever seen in the store. It is golden yellow. It is thick. It is amazing. And um, same with the goat's milk. Our goat's milk was amazing. It was thick and creamy and just really, really enjoyable. So being able to raise these things on your homestead, being able to, um, even if you don't raise them, but you might uh, know somebody that does raise them and you can purchase some for butchering. There are farms that do the butchering for you. If you're not into it and you're squeamish about you know having to kill something but I really truly believe it is a survival skill it is a life skill to know this process so I will leave that at that but yes very much so Kelly all right so back back to Chad there were more blessings in that as well in the regard that when Chad was along the road. You know, this is something we got to think about too. When things happen to us, and I've talked about this before, you know, we instantly go into like the humdrum mode often um, instead of praising God for our, our mishaps. And that's something that we have learned to do as well as is to praise God for the mishaps. A lot of times there is reason behind the mishaps. It either slows us down that something doesn't happen or we miss something or it just slows the process. Maybe sometimes we are just supposed to slow down. Jill says, my dad told me if I couldn't kill it, I shouldn't eat it. That is awesome. That is awesome. And that is true. And, and we, it gives you a respect. It gives you a respect for the animal, 
for what you are eating, for the goodness of what you're eating. Um, I mean, our deer meat, we were blessed with really good grass-fed beef. And it just tasted funny to us because we are so used to our game meats tasting so much richer and more flavorful. It was kind of crazy. So you learn to have a great appreciation for the whole process. That's really awesome. Diana says, raw goat's milk is the best milk I've ever had. I used to help a friend milk his goats. Yeah, we were, we were very fortunate. I will share a story. My uncle used to have goats. And when we would go there, he would always share his goat's milk ice cream. And I felt like I was sitting there and eating the goat. It smelled, it, it tasted like the goat smelled. Good morning, Pamela. And part of that is because when you milk goats, and even cows, you see the old timers doing this too, where they would milk the animal and then they would instantly put the milk in a cold place. We would flash freeze or I would have ice, um, not ice cubes, but, uh, oh my goodness, my brain is not working today, so forgive me, but uh, a, froze, a frozen ice pack in the bottom of the milk bucket. That way it would get cold instantly and that gets that gaminess, as people call it, out of the milk. But oh my goodness, yes, goat's milk is amazing. I love, I loved our goat's milk. The one thing I didn't care for, and this could have been because the cream had to sit so long, you don't get a lot of cream on the goat's milk like you do on, a cow, on cow's milk to be able to make butter, and I wanted to make butter with the goat's milk. And that tasted like the goat smelled. So, but I think it's because I had to leave it sit so much because I didn't have such an abundance. I had a great amount of milk coming in, but I didn't have an abundance of cream and I had to leave it sit for a while. So I, I could be wrong on that. Um, I don't know, uh, Kelly, do you do uh, butter with your goat's milk? But yes, it is very, very good, very tasty. Um, but back with what, what Chad was doing, I was he, that was so inspiring to get that message this morning because that is what we need to do and that is what we try to do is to praise God regardless of what is happening, to seek God regardless of what is happening, in the good and in the bad. We seek God every day and honestly guys, with what we've been going through and especially as of late, I could not imagine what life would be like. I just couldn't. I mean. When I took Austin to school and came back, that drive had done me in. Uh, and before I took him to school, I had to get all his paperwork ready, create his transcripts and, and get all that for this homeschooling together and, and just fill out all the paperwork, you know, and just, and, and I didn't just have that going on. I had a lot of client work. I had other um, legal issue matters that I was taking care of with other things. I had business things I was taking care of. And, and then just keeping up with the day-to-day -day of the homestead. And it just put my body into this panicked place. And it just was progressive. I wasn't getting the time I needed to regroup because I, we had to dive right into hunting season. And it did matter because we don't have the funding to buy meat. So we needed to get secure our meat and secure our animals. The same as we need to secure firewood upcoming. But, you know... We gotta try, if we, if we have the relationship with God, we have to also trust that he is going to help us have the grace we need to make it through the whole process. And I've been talking about that. I've been reading that to you from one of the devotionals that I have. I'm gonna read this real quick and then, do you have it with you now? Okay, no worries, that's fine. Okay. So then, um, anything I've asked you to do, I've given you the grace to do. This is like God is speaking to us. If the grace is not there, come to me and make sure that what you're doing is what I have called you to do. Because sometimes we're out of alignment with what he's wanting us to walk out. But don't carry things that are not yours to carry. Give them to me. Live out of your life doing what I am calling you to do, taking one season at a time. That has just pertained to the last several weeks of what I've been sharing with you guys. But it's it's really important that we we pause and we and and that we're willing to thank him for even the mishaps. You know, Chad did have blessings that followed behind that. His uh he, he got a ride and, and his truck towed back to the house and the other vehicle started right up so he was able to get to work. But 
we have to believe that God has a plan and that everything that is happening around us has purpose. And some days, and, and, I, and I know you will all relate to this, some days are just hard and you can't, you can't get yourself to do that. You're just in such a place and you're so worn down and you're so worn out that it's just hard. It's hard, plain and simple hard. It's not that you don't trust God. It's not that you don't believe in God. It's not that you don't love what he's doing in your life. It's not that you aren't grateful or blessed. It's just that it's stinking hard. And I know that I'm not the only one that gets to that place. And up until these last probably three months, we've been really taking good care of ourselves. We've been pushing through, but we've been taking care of ourselves and making sure our pace is good and that we're not wearing ourselves out and that we're not, um, that we're setting boundaries and that we are, are doing the best we can without killing ourselves. But these last three months just kind of took over with everything and it was one thing to the other. And I know I'm not the only one. How many of you guys can relate? I know you can relate. Share with me that. I, I know that you can relate. Um, so Courtney says, yes, we do. So you do make butter with the goat's milk. What is the trick to keeping it from tasting like a goat smells? Do you, and how many goats do you have? With the amount of goats that you have, are you able to do the butter because you have such a volume of the um, cream? Or... Are you freezing it? Can you freeze it and still get it to turn to butter? Because I know when I freeze my goat milk, milk to make soap, it would it would separate. So when you're using the butter churn or shaking the jar, does it eventually turn to butter? Just curious, because that was one thing I experimented with only one time, um, and then we got rid of our goats because I got sick. So would love to know that, and that would be helpful information for other people. But you know, sometimes our perspective, our mindset, um, even our place, mental place, sometimes spiritual place. For me, it's just mental. My spiritual place is so incredibly strong. I hover and hang on to him like <laughs> I feel like I'm hanging on to his feet all the time. Um, and, and, and my love and compassion... For Jesus is so strong because of what I've walked out and I and I do believe that when you walk out hard things and you experience things like I I almost lost my life in 2016 that gives you a pure appreciation for what he is doing in your life and it puts you in a place of deep communal relationship and you know, not everybody has that. Not everybody wants that. It's something I live for. So, you ready? Oh, that looks so cool. I'm so excited. Okay. We're going to hey, everybody. We're gonna take a short little, this is a, a, a little break, a little Treyer Wilderness break. Um, we have a new product. This is divine. This was given to us by God. Um, we had a whole bunch of big jobs lined up. We were set for the winter, and all of a sudden, everything fell apart. But as it was falling... Like big, big, big jobs. Big yeah. jobs. Like, yeah, we'd have made real good money on them. And, and, been, okay, and, and been in but a good spot. It was, it was two... Big pole barns. Really huge pole barns. 50 by 100 was the one. 50 by 100. The other one was 50 by... 50? 50 I think it was yeah and the one was totally finished on the inside would have been finished on the inside hey brother <laughs> um and uh yeah they petered they just they, they got pushed off till next year so it, it just by kinda, the homeowner so it just kind of you know all right we got something else on um, boom there they are gone but we're thanking God, we're trusting mm -hmm. God, and we've been taking on small jobs all year because of fear of taking on anything big, that if this sells and we move, we can't, it would have been hard to maintain moving and taking care of jobs and still being able to do those jobs if we're not here. So, God <laughs> Im implanted several ideas. This is just one of many 
that we are getting into place. And um, this is gonna be a, a, a product line, not just this item, but this is unique. And we decided to call it the light in the dark lantern. Boom, 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 boom. Ta-da! <laughs> and this takes both of us to do. Um, he makes the wood and does the glass, and I am doing the punch tin. And uh, this is made to be hung or to sit um, on a windowsill. I don't uh, know if you can see that punched. Yeah, if you keep turning, you can. Yeah. And there'll be different patterns available. This is just the one we're showing. Um, and the reason that we are calling it the light in the dark is actually for two reasons. Why don't you grab a chair and sit down with me? You pause and slow down. I got stuff to I know, pause, breathe. <laughs> We're having to make each other slow down, as you can see. Um, the light in the dark is, for one, this is a light that came to us in the darkness. I love candles. I love the glow of candles. I love the glow of the wood stove. I'll look at it then. Try to ask what the name was again. Light, the light in the dark lantern. And our hope is there will be a card that is um, sent with this product when it is purchased um, that will explain the story, but also that our hope is that when people have these lanterns and they're using them, both in the good times and the bad, that they are aware of God's glowing presence because <laughs> he's present he's so ever present when things are falling apart he's there when it's good he's there he's always working in the background it is absolutely it's absolutely amazing so we are taking pre-orders for these because they are going to be custom made as they are ordered and um, there will be several other items coming and in the works. Um, he's got some trapping products that are um, in the works and will be on the website. This will be on the website after today. Um, I will put a link in the description and then I will also put a link moving forward and I'll probably do a separate video maybe on this as well, but it's done and we are taking orders for it. We've been, this is part of our other hustle. We've been, we've been hunting in the morning, hunting in the evening, Working, working on on this in the middle, working on websites, working on other products, skinning hides. Oh my goodness, it's just been insane. I will say I'm grateful too. We um, among those things, we got got another um, job mm -hmm. here. Um, went and looked at it the other day. So God blessed us with a. It's a small job. Not a big job, but uh, you know it's, it's it's work. It's work, so we're very grateful for that. It's close, mm -hmm. and and you got to see all the blessings. And when I read today's um, devotional to you, this will even make this uh, make you laugh even more uh, in regard to um, listening to that still small voice. We sat on the couch one night and all of a sudden all these ideas just kept coming. And I kept saying to you, I wanted to punch tin. I, I'm, I want to do the old tin tinkering. I love the traditional crafts. I love the look of the old things. And to be able to, for us to be able to put this together and to do it together, um, it'll also be branded with our, our dual logo. Um, it's okay. not right now, but it will be. He. I gotta make the make the brand up. So, but um, he has the GT brand, which is the Rocking GT, which is how this all started with his products. And um, when we got married, he had his aunt uh, put a new logo on our wedding cake that was the GTT, the Rocking GTT. You can even show him the brand; it's in there. Yeah, but it's hard to see because it's backwards. Okay. Oh, oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, when you, when you... <laughs> That's right. So let me go back and read some of these while while you're doing that. Good morning, Charles. Okay, Tammy says, that is awesome. Love it. So neat. Kelly says, that's great. Diana says, good morning, Teresa. 
George says, oh boy, that was hard for you to do. Just sit down and stop. I had a hard time with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it's us. Oh, that's our struggle. We've just had a lot going on. Go ahead, show that. That's that's the brand. It um, used to be it used to be just the GT and then he added the T coming off the side. So we have it's, a, it's actually a, a registered registered brand. brand. I had registered so yeah and who knows eventually we might be using that on our own cattle I don't know what's ahead for us right yeah. <laughs> but it's on our products so uh, if you get a knife that he makes it'll have the GT brand on it and if you get something that we've jointly made it'll have the GTT on it um, but there's some really really cool stuff ahead um, he has a lot of um, things he's working on that are larger that right now we have not established how we would ship so they are local only um, as the interest increases and somebody out of the area is interested we will look into shippers and, and so forth but he has a full product line of mortise and tenon products um, the, yeah the, I've shown this before let me unplug this and see if I can show you this uh, let me see here. I'll spin it this way. That right there, the Hope Chest, is one of his products. It has locking hinges that he made on the inside, the hand forged handles on the side, and as you can see, it's wooden peg. So that's just one of the many products. Oh, well, my. <laughs> I was awesome. gonna. It's going to show the bed. The bed you've seen before. Our our bed is uh, one of the other things he has done. Um, it's all wooden peg. That that bed that I made. It's all like I said. It's wooden pegged, and it's uh, yeah. If you want to tear it apart, all you got to do is knock the wooden pegs out, and um, you can take it apart. So it's kind of like the old um, the old barns and stuff. Are made yeah it's and and he does such neat stuff he's very meticulous and he also made the wood the wood rack I don't know if I showed that recently because I haven't been inside I've been outside but I'll spin this around and show his wood rack the wood rack is the other item that he has there that he just recently made and then also um, here on you don't have to well you can if you want to um, he made the uh, poker and the shovel and the broom, and then there's also a piece to hang them that we just haven't gotten yeah. them up on the on the wall. But, whoop, I just hit the button, sorry. Hit the button. <laughs> oh, the, so, the, If you're wondering, the logs are actually supposed to go straight across there, um, not this way. Um, I had gone out and just cut a bunch of wood and wasn't really measuring so um, it didn't fit going across but the ones that I make to sell it, I want to shorten them down so whatever width firewood you have would work they'll be custom somewhat custom made based on your needs for firewood so I saw okay so oh okay so there you have it. That is what we have been working on. Some of what we have been working on. Um, there'll be another video coming out showing some of his other things he's been working on. But um, I want to share something else with you. Let me just see here. Um, that is a work of love, Shelly says. Kelly says, the template is always the most challenging. You both did great. Thank you. And, and Chad says, may I share? Awesome. Yes, um, we will be... I, I've been... In addition to doing all this stuff, I've been working on our shopping cart to get it out there because everything has different shipping costs and and I had to take our old cart down and replace it with a brand new cart. So it's like starting from scratch. So it's just been a process and we're both trying to take a deep breath and, and get our bearings. Good morning, Angela. So this is what we will be doing and I want to share a movie with you. Whether you were going through a hard time or not, this movie was really inspiring. I did end up doing a lot of crying through it because there was a lot of ways that we could relate to this story. But 
I was actually working on this and I was watching, catching up on YouTube videos. Um, there's certain people we follow and we do educationals on there and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, there was a preview for one of Pure Flix videos and it was called Apple Mortgage Cake. And it was an extremely, Great. I'm, Great. yes. <laughs> It was an extremely inspiring story. It is about a single mom with three boys that is losing her house. And so you can see how we could relate. But we had already had this in the works and started. But if you watch the movie, you will understand the correlation. This is our, our Apple mortgage cake right here. This is our light in the dark lantern. And I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to be able to show it to you. He wanted to finish it this morning so that we could could show it to everybody um, and get it out there. So like I said, this will be on the website later today and I will share the link with you on that. You can, are you going to go, um, are you heading out now? I'm going to have a half a cup of coffee, make sure this fire is going and then... And breathe? And breathe. Okay. Let me see here. Oh, cool. I don't know how to say that. Chad, ten, Tenebrous Lux, post Tenebrous Lux, after darkness light. And that's just it. You know, many of us are walking out some dark places right now. And the thing you have to remember is it's a season. And it will last for as long as God needs it to last, whether it's for us to, to grow, to be nurtured, to learn, for people to learn from us, for other people's lessons to be learned. There's many reasons why we walk these things out. And you know, it's not that our God is an evil God. It's that he loves us and he's going to take us to a much greater place. And... Um, Everything happens for a reason. I'm a true believer in that. And and there will be light at the end of the tunnel. And you got to you got to look at it too that um you know, people say, "Well, God's such a good God. Why is he allow this happen and or why is this or why is that or you know, well, you got to remember evils involved too. Yes, sometimes God allows us to go through things to build us, to shape us into what He wants. Um, and other times, there's just, this is where we live, the earth is... The enemy's the, playground. The devil's. Yep. You know, it belongs to the devil. And it's um, an evil place. Yep. So it's, you know... It's not God, you know, doing these things to someone, mm -mm. you know, it, 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 he loves us. Yeah. So sometimes it's, you know, just playing down evil that's fighting us. And sometimes it's, you know, God's using a certain situation to mature, mature us. us. Yeah. And that's what today is about, which is kind of funny. Today is about, um, you know, patience, maturity, and, um, Praising him through it all. And, oh, I just lost my train of thought. But uh, the other thing, I, I do know what I want to say. The other thing is learning to discern. Here's to you. <laughs> the other thing that is a process through this is learning to discern when the enemy is playing with your head and playing with you and, and interfering and... <laughs> And, and that is that is a huge part of our maturity and our growth is learning to discern the enemy's hand in our day to day. And when you can learn that, you will be able to respond to things like Chad did this morning. Because sometimes, you know, it, it's the enemy just trying to get the best of you, and you walk away shining your light, you know. And and you never know through those times. Like, for example, this morning with Chad, um, 
You know, you never know when God might send somebody along your path, excuse me, that you can be a light to. Even though you're having the hard time, God could send somebody there that you could be a light to and, and share his light with them. Yep. So, you know, it's, you, you just never know what God's going to use and how he's going to use you. Even even in the the hard times and stuff, yep. you know, it, it's God. God uses you. Yep. I thought I saw your face popping across on one of those little balloons and the and and the likes, Miss Candy Crocker. Good morning, Candy. <laughs> and, and you know, guys, it's it's just trying to stay strong. That's all we can do. And and I've given you resources for that okay. every week. Read your Bible. Stay close to God. Stay in communication with him. You don't, you know, you can pray. You can also talk to him. You can um, listen to music that's uplifting. You can listen to things that give you positive encouragement. You can read good books. But the Bible, guys, is where it's all at. And reading it and learning from it and being empowered by it. I was out in my blind, and I know he's going to laugh and scold me, but you know what? When you can't see anything yet, and you have your light turned mm -hmm. dim, I was reading Psalms 91, and I was reading Psalms 105. And you know what? It was very empowering. It was very empowering sitting out there being surrounded by him and reading his word. And, you know, we each have our own needs and, and, and ways of regrouping and renewing ourselves. Okay, I will. I think she was on when I showed it, but I'll, I'll show it again. I will show. Um, but we all have our, our way. Each, you know, what works for me isn't going to always work for you. So you've got to find what works best for you. But I want to read through some of these devotions to you today. There are a couple, and, and they're really, really powerful. Um, this one is called Developing Patience. Have patience, the results will show. Tribulation worketh patience, Romans 5 3. You're heading up to check the traps, yeah. then? Okay. Isn't it interesting how as we get older, we tend to become more patient, even though we have less time left? Why is that? It's because of perspective. Our problems haven't changed that much, but our perspective has. Things that once upset us don't anymore because we've lived long enough to know His grace is sufficient, as I read earlier. And that's 2 Corinthians 12.9. And what's funny is 2 Corinthians 12.9 has come to me three days in a row, and I love it, and that's why we're talking about this today. I already had planned to do this, and I added something to it that I, I found today as well. But once you realize that it's no big deal, and most things aren't, you can say, been there, done that. I've told you guys before, if there's things you cannot control, there's no reason to waste headspace on it. You just got to let stuff go. You've got to put it at his feet and, and keep going. But instead of fretting and complaining, which doesn't work and steals our joy, we've learned to sing, Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Like Joseph, you can look back to times in life you thought you'd never get through and stuff you thought you'd never survive and say, You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. And that is awesome. That is something we should be hanging on to, too. Um, you know, the, the enemy is going to try to break us. But if we can, we can see that and turn it into good, we're already a step ahead. And we'll eliminate getting ourselves in burnout and into a bad place. So discernment is huge. But yes, perspective produces patience. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials, for we know they are good for us. They help us learn to be patient and also create endurance. And patience develops strength of character and helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and faith are strong and steady. When that happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well, for we know how dearly God loves us and we feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. So let God develop your patience. Perspective produces patience. And you know, guys, that's what we've been saying all along. Even though things are hard, 
God brought us through this. You know, if we were to lose our house, God is going to carry us through. If we sell our house in the middle of a snowstorm, he's going to part the snowflakes. And I truly believe that. You know, he's gotten us this far. He's had purpose in it all. He's not going to leave us sitting. You know, he's going to take care of us. So we have to have truth and faith in that as well. Trust and faith. Good luck. I'm out. Good luck. Thanks. Get a bunch. Yep. All right. So let me see here. What do we got? Shelly says, God may have made the vehicle problems to keep him from being in a certain place to keep him safe. I know. I thought that too. Or that somebody would stop and that he could fellowship with them. There was a lot of different different scenarios that were rolling through my head too. And his perspective was the part that was huge. You know, and that's what shined to me today. And that's what made me laugh because I, you know, knowing what I was planning on talking about today and what God had already shared with me. It, it was just so fitting. So this is another one. Um, this was a series, um, Paul's Thorn and Yours. I was given a thorn in my flesh, and this is 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Bible scholars disagree as to what Paul's thorn was. Some think it may have been poor eyesight, others a speech impediment, and others a physical challenge. Why doesn't the Bible tell us? Well, if his problem was poor eyesight, then we would say that doesn't help me because I have 20-20 vision. If it was a speech impediment, those with the gift of communication wouldn't find comfort in his words. If it was a physical challenge, those with good health would think they're exempt. The reason the Bible doesn't tell us may be this. No matter what that particular struggle or affliction is, the same God who gave Paul victory over his thorn will give you victory too. Who's the person in your life you would describe as a thorn in your side? What's the thorny situation at work you face day after day? You can have a thorny relationship with someone that requires extra grace, love, and prayers. That's why Peter writes, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. That's 2 Peter 3.18. Each of our thorns is different because God customizes them to our need. Why? So that we will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. God is more interested in our character than he is in our comfort. So when we pray for lighter burdens, he gives us stronger backs. The songwriter said, he giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He giveth more strength when the labors increase. To added affliction, he addeth his mercy. To multiplied trials, he multiplied peace. He's going to give us whatever we need to make it through whatever it is we're going through. So no matter what your particular struggle or affliction is, God will give you victory. you got to believe that, guys. You've really got to believe that. That's what helps get you through when things get tough. Um, our toughest right now is just our pace. Our pace and our need to produce and to uh, find an answer um, when everything fell apart. But again, you know, I think in some ways... We, needed to, we should have slowed our pace because God has us, God is carrying us, God has our back. Yes, this would have got done in time, but, and, and you know, we had deadlines for meat, you know, the season's only open so long. So, you know, sometimes in life we are pushed a little harder to go a little faster, but also discerning that we're in a pace that's not healthy and also knowing when we need to step back. Knowing when we may have been in the extreme hard the day before and couldn't muster, muster ourselves out of that place and just wanted to pack a bag and run. That now today I'm in a place and you know what, I'm giving God all the glory. It's in his hands, it's out of my control. You know, so you're going to find that the day-to-days are different. It's all part of our maturity. It's all part of our growth. But it's learning to focus and keep our focus where our focus needs to be. And, and dealing with our daily needs. Paying attention. Being discerning with the enemy. But also, uh, you know, taking care of ourselves. And, and, you know, regardless what's on our plates... If we can't control it and we can't change it, our pace sometimes isn't going to make that big of a difference either. So it's just a matter of finding that balance. So the heart of spiritual maturity. 
People will ask, what can I do to really grow as a Christian? Often they are looking for a secret path to maturity, some action they can perform. But the true key to growth in your relationship with Christ isn't based on service or knowledge or any other outward accomplishment the world tends to admire. Genuine maturity and effectiveness hinge upon your heart relationship with the Lord rather than something you can do for Him. When you understand this truth, your whole partigum shifts. It puts all Christians on the same level, from the high-profile preacher to the quietest member of the church. The believer's talents, accomplishments, and personality are far less important than the commitment to simply knowing God and simply having that relationship. The Lord called David a man after my own heart. That was about, that was it about him. I'm sorry. What was it about him? That God valued so highly. He certainly had his share of mistakes, sins, and character flaws. Yet more than anything else, what characterized his life was that he sought to know the Lord, whether he was a shepherd, a fugitive, a warrior, or a powerful king. The time he spent with his heavenly father was his lifeline. In psalm after psalm, David laid everything before the Lord and wholeheartedly longed to do his will. That was his greatest strength. And I am honored and blessed to say that that is what I'm striving for, too. Knowing him has got me where I am today in my faith, in my walk, in my health, everything. And I would not change that relationship for anything. And I'm not afraid to talk about it. As a matter of fact, I am inspired to share it and to sing it from the mountaintops because of what I have gained in these three years because of my walk with Christ. So do you want to grow spiritually and be transformed in your everyday faith walk? Take a step beyond asking, what can I do for God so that I can be a better Christian? Instead, come before the Lord and say, here I am. You have full access to my heart. That's all it is, right there. Just seeking Him. S seeking Him. Now, this is the part that makes me laugh. Um, this was today's, and it goes along with it. Stop talking and start listening. This is Paul's thorn and yours, th the third in the series, and it says, My power works best in weakness. Again, look at this, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It's definitely screaming at us that, you know, in our, in our weakness, he is making us strong. In our weakness, he is using us to touch others. In our weakness, he is helping us to inspire others walking a very similar walk and you know what's also very crazy is there are many people going through some extremely rough rough stuff a lot um, and and although their troubles are very opposite end of the spectrum than ours emotionally we are parallel emotionally and physically we are walking a parallel line and we are experiencing the same things although God is walking us through different dark areas um, being able to be there for one another is a key thing, and that's what we are doing here every Wednesday. We are here for each other. There is a prayer list down below. Please keep those people in your prayers and lift them. Um, the Rosenberg family is another family that is not on that list that needs to be added. They lost their uh, grandfather um, recently, and he was a very, very unique man. And uh, old school had great stories to share and a really, really neat person. So um, heaven has gained a, a good one. And uh, I ask that you uh, keep Chad in your prayers <coughs> and keep Tammy, she's not feeling well. I know Charles is going through some crazy stuff. Um, trying to think what the date will be next week, Wednesday. But Terry and his wife June need prayer. Terry is gonna have surgery on November 5th and Terry and June need prayers to uh um for their marriage for a renewed marriage so uh keep them in your prayers but the reason i say that is as part of this and in our weakness we need to remember others we need to pray for others we need to serve others while we're going through our rough spots um and and just know that god is going to use us in our weakest areas and in our weakest places to to shine and to that he will shine through I always love the saying that Todd White says that when, as a Christian, when we get squeezed, God should come out. And I think that is really, really true. You know, when we are in our weakest places, 
You know, and that's what we, you know, I've been sharing our raw, and you see God shining through. Um, I mean, sure, we get weak, we get tired, we get weary, my body caves. I had to soak this morning in a treatment, so, you know, but, but he's ever-present, and I give him all the glory for everything, absolutely everything. Um, Shelly says, just know it is in the Lord's plan. You can push to get things done and then end up sick because you push too much or do it in a healthy in a healthy way and in his time. Exactly. They probably are the same length of time. I know. It's a very good possibility. Very good possibility. Kelly says, when times are good, we tend to stray from the word and become a a lax child toward God. He is capable to deflecting our troubles, but he knows we need to be refined. And when we are in a valley, we will draw near to him where he can show us our, our wrongdoings. So we have the opportunity for growth, ensuring us of his forgiveness and empowering us to change. My scripture this morning was 2 Peter 3.8. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And and um, one of the things that has gotten really strong for me is that I have to seek him. I have to daily, regardless what is going on in my life. You know how in the beginning of the year I made my journal my uh, new habit for the year? Well, as a part of that, and it's been a, an ongoing thing over these um last three years as well is that I just can't I can't deny him in my life because without him in my life there is a great void and I used to be that lax child I'd only come to him when I truly needed him but I, I can't do that anymore I, I can't it's it's an addiction almost and it's it's a good addiction and I'm thankful for it because it keeps me grounded it keeps me in his word it keeps me focused on him and it keeps me I don't know it's just I, I need that relationship I really really do uh, second Peter three eighteen happens to be rather you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ all glory to him both now and forever and that is a, a great great verse and and you know Something else that's really important for you to remember and realize is that as you are reading his word, he will take you to what you need to hear oftentimes. Now, let me read this because um, that plays into this. All right, so my power works best in weakness, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Paul writes, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul didn't get the answer he was looking for until he quit praying and started listening. Sometimes we're so busy telling God what he ought to do for us that we can't hear God telling us what he wants to do in us. If you have a stubborn problem in your life, maybe it's time to quit talking and start listening. God taught Paul lessons at the best time he could learn them, during difficulties. So the bad news about tough times turns out to be the good news after all, that you learn more about God in the valley than you do on the mountaintop. I love this too. C.S. Lewis describes how God uses pain to communicate with us. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks to us in our conscience, but shouts to us in our pains. Before God spoke, all Paul wanted was to remove his problem. After God spoke, he realized that in his problem, he had found something better and greater, supernatural strength reserved for those tough times when he realized God's presence is greater than our problems and his purpose is greater than our pain. So if you have a stubborn problem in your life, maybe it's time to quit talking and start listening. And that was something that we, we also, I want to mention this part of it too. You know, in the beginning of our struggles three years ago, you know, we were praying for deliverance of this in a different way um, and asking things of God. And now, over the last year and a half, we've been putting things at God's feet and asking merely for wisdom, knowledge, and direction. 
knowing that he'll provide everything else we need and that's going to be provided in his timing um, the other thing is that in in doing that and and in our deep relationship that formed with him um, we started being able to hear him and that is powerful I told you guys last week or the week before how that was something I craved so badly on the farm was to know my purpose and to to be able to have that relationship that everybody talks about that he talks to them and that he's there and that you can hear him and feel his presence and I wanted that and and that was 10, 10 years ago and and now I have that I've had that for the last three years and it was through my deepest struggles and through my 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 scariest walk in life that 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 was revealed to me so it's pretty awesome really in our problems when we are able to see that stuff and 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 learn the importance of the habit needed to have that relationship with him all the time and and how glorious it really is to have that relationship all the time we walk in we walk and prayer life has my walk in prayer life has strengthened but my journaling is still a struggle <laughs> I've I've got it all together that's the only thing that I've got together <laughs> right now I feel but um but that's but you know what in my mind that is the best and most important thing that I could have together are those three things because those three things together put it all together for me um, and your journaling will come good grief Kelly you have been flying with a fiery streak behind you all year so now your time will come to slow and rest and pull that all together and and guys I want to encourage you to, to create that habit not just journaling but to create that habit of that relationship with him on a daily basis you know there are occasions where um, our pace gets a little crazy like I had to take Austin to school and it was a crazy on the road kind of day but we still did our devotions on the road and we still found time for him and, and there are those days that do take us away that we just uh, we're committed and we, we can't do things maybe until later in the day or the next day um, but it's just it's just fun to me because hunting uh, really bring and being out in the outdoors really brings everything full face to me full circle um, because I am surrounded by him there that is where I feel my most whole uh, my most connected um, for lack of better terms and to be able to be out there and do my devotions like being out on the swing the other week and talking with you and those two eagles flew over I mean that's just that was amazing um, God is good God does have purpose in everything no matter how hard things get and you know Sometimes we feel vulnerable. Sometimes we feel um, just to a point where we, we don't have the strength to keep going. He will provide it. And, and sometimes, again, that is because we need to pause, slow down, and listen and hear his voice. And it's all part of, it's all part of maturing and, and learning him, learning how he operates, but also discerning for ourselves, our thinking, what we're saying to ourselves. Um, where we are mentally and and discerning the enemy that's playing a huge role in all of this because he will use whatever open door he can to try to ruffle our feathers rattle our chain uh, loosen our grip whatever however you want to look at that and um, when you can put it all together and I think that that comes with that close relationship and also you know seeking him all the time and and knowing and not being instantly um, in an upheaval when things don't go as planned or when things change or get worse even you know that you don't ne necessarily uh, get rattled you just get stronger uh, I love um, the verses in James I, I love Ephesians 6 and 2 Corinthians 12 9 those are empowering scriptures to me you know um, he laughs at me uh, as if it's like a girl power um, just 
because I love how it strengthens me. I love how it enables me to um, regroup, renew, put on my big girl panties when necessary, you know. His word has such abilities to strengthen and, and there are so many lessons to be learned. And I know, I wish he was sitting right here to say this because I know that he would agree, although it was hard and this is a hard place to be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change any of it from uh, the six years prior to my surgery of just this um, declining health to being flat on my back for almost a year, over a year, to healing these last two years, to being in this financial place as a result. You know, God has purpose and the growth that has come from it is so powerful. And, and to see where I've personally come in as a person, in my spiritual walk, in my mental walk, in my physical walk in life, um, how that has played a role and I'm just I'm just grateful I'm just very grateful I know some of you have jumped on since we showed this um, Glenn asked me to reshare this because I don't know if Candy saw this this is our new product and it'll be a product line it'll be our tin tinkering line but this particular item is our um, light in the dark lantern and uh, you can put a pillar candle in there you can put tea lights in there I love burning this at night. I love being able to utilize lanterns like this. We have lantern hooks so you could hang it off of a beam. You could hang it off at a wall. Um, the nice thing with the four glass pieces is that you have great light showing through. But this has a lot of significance for us because this was formed out of listening. This was formed when all of our jobs for the winter fell through. They were big jobs as the mountain man shared. They were jobs that would have set us back up. Um, we felt that God had blessed us with those jobs because the doors opened very widely and we consulted with him before even accepting those jobs and felt that he was telling us to take them on um, because we've taken on small jobs all year. We felt we were in a place that maybe a bigger job could be taken on and, and felt his nudging and then they fell apart and he, and he took them away may not ever know the purpose in that other than the fact that he led us somewhere different and it's okay but this is the light in the dark lantern that came out of our dark place but we hope that it will shed and shine a light and shed light on the fact that God is present all the time that his light is glowing and embracing us at all times and when this is burning I just and you have it lit in your home our hope is that you think of those things and realize that he is engulfing you and he's there in the light and in the dark and he's always present and I'm just excited I'm excited that we have a product we can both put our love into and uh, do together uh, we each have our own little uh, skills and crafts and different things that we've been doing but this is something that he brought to us that enabled us to work on it together so and that is a fun part of our current situation as well our current situation is that we are empty nesters and we are um, having fun with that and and doing a lot more together we I've been on the trap line with him we've been hunting together We've been butchering together you know um, that is part of why we came out here was to be able to do things together my computer work sometimes limits me on that but as of late we've been trying to uh, rework things so anyway that's a lot for today but I really really appreciate you guys joining us this will be added to the website later today and uh, I will share the link down below and uh, <sighs> If you'll help us spread the word on that, that would be so greatly appreciated. Um, and definitely check out the movie, um, Apple Mortgage Cake. Uh, it's very inspiring, and if you're not in or have not gone through a dark place, like it. It's a, one of those good movies to watch because it'll be in the back of your mind when you are walking through a rough spot. Um, through God, all things are possible, and that's something that we need to remember. 
I'd also like to ask before I say a prayer, if you would please keep Austin, the mountain boy, in your prayers. Um, these are the hardest times for him at school. He has decided to go and Chad will be cheering. Um, strictly uh, heavy equipment repair and he has started his hands on and he is super excited about that. Um, I, I know he is struggling there. It's just uh, a different place, different people, different atmosphere. And this is the slowest part of his experiences there um, as they're just getting started, just initiating the process of what it's like, learning the process, and then getting into the trade will be where things really take off for him. But if you could keep him in your prayers, I would so greatly appreciate it. And Courtney, thank you again. This is beautiful. I love it. I love the earrings. And just thank you for your kindness, for thinking of me, and a uh, handcrafted gift um, that's always made with love. So thank you. And Tammy, thank you also. Um, we talked about it earlier. Check the comments um, up from the very beginning of the chat. You'll see Tammy's link for her Lilla Rose um, hair pieces. They are amazing and I want to encourage you to check that out and see what all they have to offer there and what she can help you with. I'm going to say a prayer and that way you guys can get back to your day. It is a glorious sunny day here. It's just really cold. And we had snow that came in two days before and it was a sideways snowing and my wash line tree was like this, I kid you not. It was insane winds here. Um, so there's a nice dusting on the ground which is good for hunting. I might get out later and try to get my deer. So I'm going to say grace here. Papa, just thank you for your love, for your mercies and for all that you're doing in our lives and in everyone else's lives. Thank you for being there with Chad today and for him sharing his inspiring moment and, and also that you kept him safe, that he was able to get to the side of the road and just know that you have purpose and, and that's a reminder that you have purpose in everything that you do for us and we do need to mature in our walk with you and have patience and also know that you have a plan and we need to slow it down and make sure that we are hearing you when you're talking to us and seeking you uh, through the good and the bad. At that point, as we seek you through our day to day, every day, that walk gets so strong and that comfort gets so great and faith and peace and trust grow so greatly. And we just thank you for that. And I just encourage, I encourage that in others. I ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone today and just let them feel your presence. Let them feel your love. Let them know what you are about. Help those that don't know you to find you. And may they, may they feel your, your blessings and grace and, and be encouraged to seek you all the time. And just be with all those on our prayer list, be with Terry and June, be with Chad, be with Tammy as she's not feeling well and uh, with her project at the house and, and uh, just be with Diana. Diana could use some prayers today too for the uh, job that she's uh, put an application in for and, and uh, just be with Shelly. Uh, she's not feeling so well today either and, and uh, just be with Kelly that she can get all her processing done and and rest for the winter and Lord we just thank you for all that you do in our lives be with the Rosenbaum uh, family as well and uh, just love on them and be with Austin as he's off at school just strengthen him put a hedge of protection over him and uh, may he shine his light there and uh, just thank you for the inspiration of our light in the dark lantern may it honor you and uh, May it be an inspiration to those that purchase it. And just thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do in our lives and that you're going to do in everyone else's. Just strengthen us for the rest of the week ahead. And thank you for loving us and more so what you're going to do in each of our lives. We love you and ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining today. I know this was a long one, but... 
it's been amazing. Your communications are amazing. Thank you for sharing openly with me and, and sharing the different things that have resonated with you, um, as well as uh, your tips on butchering and, and, and everything else. It is so amazing to see everybody involved in this. I may orchestrate this, but it's not just me, and I give God all the glory for everything that is going on in our lives and, and the lives that are being touched as a result of what we do. This is God's this is God's live video. You guys have been saying some things here. Um, and and Kelly, you will get your your journaling down pat. It'll come. I worked how many years at mine and when it did it just came and it's awesome. So, I'm excited for that for you cuz I know you'll enjoy it like I do. Courtney said amen. Have a great day. Good luck on your hunting. Love you. Love you too and thank you. Amen and God bless you all from Tammy and right back at you. Amen, and we lift our prayers for each of you and those on the prayer list. Thank you, sweet Kelly. Amen, Shelly says. Thank you, sweet friend. And Terry, you just joined, but I'm jumping off of here. But God bless you, too. We are praying for you in June. Guys, have a fabulous day. I love you all. Thank you for your support, your prayers, your inspiration, and always renewing me on, on our Facebook lives. Love you all. Have a great day. God bless you.